499 days since we've been told 15 days to stop the spread. None of this has anything to do with science. None of this has anything to do with reality. I'll remind everybody here, these vaccinations are not approved by the FDA. They are experimental. Yet this government, this government is saying that you will inject something into your body whether you want to or not. You want to know the definition of tyranny? That's the definition of tyranny. Let me talk about something else. We've got a couple members, delusory members who are on the wrong side of the facts and on the wrong side of history. One of the greatest infractions, going back to before this session, in the last session, Speaker Pelosi, this inquisition, inquisition against fellow Americans, against Americans for their beliefs, must stop. It absolutely must stop. The only remedy we have, the only remedy we have is to remove her, and that path goes through Kevin McCarthy. The path for these delusory members on the wrong side of the facts and on the wrong side of history go through Kevin McCarthy. We are here as the Freedom Caucus, as Americans, as citizens, as representatives, to provide, provide leadership to this conference and leadership to this country who have had enough, who have had enough of this. I am joined today by my good friend, is he here? No. Ralph Norman. Great. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> you know, uh, as has been said by Scott, we're tired of it. The Freedom Caucus is tired of it. We've got members who are willing to stand up and say enough is enough. Uh, pick, pick, a, pick a topic. You know, the January 6th trial that Nancy Pelosi is judge and jury, kicking off two members when she said it was going to be bipartisan. We've got two members, as Scott has mentioned, of our party who have switched teams. What if you had a football game and two players just all of a sudden kept the same uniform but started playing for the other team? That's what we've got with these two members. Uh, something has got to be done. Nancy Pelosi with the fines. Now, folks, it, this is so much bigger than a $500 or $2,500 fine. It's not about that. It's about overreach of government and unchecked power of a Speaker of the House who's doing it because she thinks she has the power. Now she thinks she can arrest members. What about bipartisanship? What about lining it, going on the science? Every one of us were in a meeting with Dr. Moynihan yesterday. The CDC is the gold standard of science. CDC. Guess what we found out yesterday? The CDC is unpublished. It has not been checked by their peers. And when we asked Dr. Moynihan, what, what's in CDC? That's the, that's the golden rule. He didn't know. And it's based in India. With a, with a drug that has not been approved, vaccine that has not been approved in America. That's the overreach of government. That's the truth that we've got to get to. All this is a facade because our cities are burning, our borders uh, crisis with millions coming across the line, and where is the mass concern about the illegal immigrants? Where is the vaccine concern about vaccinating them? They're going to every city in, uh, in America. Where is that concern? It's not. This is about power. She wants to mask what's going on in this country. Ask any, anybody what they're paying at the gas pump, what they're paying at the grocery store. Inflation is rampant. You can go on and on about the crisis in America. It's time to stand up. It's, not, it's time to let our voices be heard. And I call on Speaker McCarthy to put up a pri privilege motion to vacate the chair, a privilege resolution to vacate the chair. Her reign has got to go. She, she is a disgrace to this country. Thank you. Why do so many millions of Americans sit at home every day waiting for President Trump to come back? Why are so many millions of Americans asking if President Trump is going to run again in 2024? Because they are looking for a leader. Americans need someone to lead right now. I'm honored to serve with the members of the House Freedom Caucus. And just like my friend Congressman Perry said, we are leading on the issues. But we are calling on the leader of this conference to lead with us. Americans need someone who will stand for them, who will fight for them, who will be their voice here at the People's House. That's what we are elected to do. We are elected to secure the rights of Americans. And I'm tired of politicians thinking they can gamble away the rights of American citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to Congress, you can caucus, 
you can conference with Republicans or Democrats. There is no independent conference. There are only two options. Sadly, since coming to Congress in January, I've seen firsthand that Representatives Kinzinger and Cheney have done more to hurt the Republican conference than help them. While working for Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi, these members should not be allowed in our closed door private meetings or even the Republican cloakroom. We had important meetings yesterday in the cloakroom. I saw Kinzinger in there. Why is he able to be a part of those conversations while he goes back and confers with the opposition? Both of these politicians, Kinzinger and Cheney, have worked more with Pelosi than they have with myself, my colleagues, or even Leader McCarthy. Before I ever took office, before I was sworn in as a United States Congresswoman, Adam Kinzinger took to Twitter to attack me by name. I didn't attack back. I didn't tweet back. I picked up the, I picked up the phone and I called him. I said, Adam, I don't think we've met. I'm Lauren. Maybe we could have a conversation before you start attacking your colleagues. He agreed with me, but he has never come and had a conversation with me. He's never sat down with me. No, when he sees me, he goes the other way, puts his head down and walks on. Both Liz and Adam have stood by and simped for Pelosi as she has consolidated power in her office and trampled the Constitution. That's really no surprise. Adam has gone on leftist shows to once again call me out by name, saying I'm not going to name members of Congress. Oh, but there's one I'll name, Lauren Boebert. Interesting. When I was falsely accused of leading a reconnaissance tour at the United States Capitol, when I had my mother, my husband, and our four sons here in the Capitol, where was Kinzinger? Where was Cheney to step up in my defense? When my family received death threats, neither used their platforms to ease tensions. But when Nancy Pelosi took the unprecedented and historic action of removing my esteemed colleagues, ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan, and chairman of the Republican Study Committee, the largest committee in the Republican conference. Jim Banks, off of the partisan January 6th committee, you saw Liz out front, blocking and tackling while Adam was filling out his paperwork to join the committee, which I call impeachment 3.0. Adam and Liz have been on CNN more than most Democrats. They've attacked Republicans at every single turn. In fact, one of these media hungry hacks even went to both the New York Times and CNN in one week to attack me. In one week. Really? Adam? That's the best you can do for the American people while Democrats are destroying every foundation of our country? It's pathetic. Even our incompetent attending physician has te could test these members positive for Trump derangement syndrome. They are a cancer to our party and to our caucus and they must be ex expelled from our conference. And now I'm honored to pass this over to my dear friend, Matt Rosendale. Good job, Lauren. Good job. Good job, Folks, we are out here. It's a very simple task that we're trying to accomplish today, and that's to get Leader McCarthy to make the resolution, the privileged re resolution that only he can make to have Speaker Pelosi vacate the chair. Yep. We've got to make changes. She has continued an abuse of power and has demonstrated her complete deviation from the normal procedure in long established procedures in the House, which is destroying any semblance of functionality or bipartisanship that we might be able to conduct there. You wonder why we're not able to get anything done? It's because Speaker Pelosi is destroying this institution and it is far time for her to be removed. It's also unfortunate when we look at the other members to see that 
we've got two members that are so driven by disdain and contempt for some of our members, for our past president, that they would participate in what is nothing more than an exercise to deflect away from the terribly failed policies of the Democratic Party and try to prosecute, to try to persecute Republicans. And because of that, they have to be eliminated from our conference. They have, they have surrendered their right and their ability to participate with our conference. The questions that really need to be asked as this commission goes forward is what warnings do security officials have? When did they have those warnings? Who did they share those warnings with? When did they share those warnings? And quite frankly, I am embarrassed to stand in front of all of this media and wonder why you haven't had the intellectual curiosity to ask these questions and to seek this information out. Now it's time for you to do your jobs and find out what's going on. Why did we have a breach in security? That's where the questions are. Let's not have this happen again. Do your jobs. I came from a newspaper family. I know what the media is for. So take care of it. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my friend. She is not here from uh, Georgia. Uh, Dan Bishop, another Close to mix. Other yeah, that's right. Other Actually, that's the other friend from Georgia. I'm Dan Bishop from North Carolina. And I think what we're talking today about in terms of Speaker Pelosi's acts and about the conduct of Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger is abuse of power. And what you see when you get, I haven't been in this institution that long, but when you get here, you recognize after a time, it's a majoritarian institution, the House. And so the minority can't exist and have a meaningful part in the House without restraint on the part of the leadership. And members of the Republican Party cannot be effective without restraint and obligation on the part of each of us. So here we are. The American people face crises of historic proportion all at once. Historic and irrational spending has ignited inflation eroding earnings value. Abandoning border security has ignited historic illegal immigration. Socialist rhetoric delegitimizing police has ignited historic surge in murders. The alliance of big government and big tech has ignited historic censorship. Socialist co-opting of public health authorities and science has ignited historic abuse of individual liberty and dignity. At this time, Americans cannot afford for Republicans to be AWOL. Consequently, Republicans cannot afford to have our leadership sabotaged by Pelosi Republicans. That's why back in February, I moved the conference to remove Liz Cheney as conference chair. She had abused her prerogatives as conference leader by consistently advancing a message that was inimical to the views of an overwhelming majority of Republicans in the conference. We eventually did that and I continued to support it when we did remove Liz in May. And now Liz and Adam Kinziger in their position as rank and file members of the Republican conference have abused their power. They have taken a position that disregards, that denigrates, that obfuscates and prevents a function of the Republican conference for the Republican leadership conference or leadership uh, committee um, and, the, and the leader, the minority leader to determine how to populate committees within Congress on behalf of the minority. We cannot abide and we cannot tolerate that. We also, as Republicans, cannot abide, we cannot tolerate the speaker and the majority taking steps that are inconsistent with the history, the traditions of this democratic body in a way that denigrate and damage 
and eliminate the voice of the minority. So I joined my colleagues in House Freedom Caucus, and I'm grateful for, the, for us to stand out here today and to at least be a voice encouraging those who are in position to do something, to call for vacating the chair, and equally important, to adopt a new rule in our conference that would require, that, that would, that would if, if effectively make it the case that if one of us, any of us, undertake a, uh, to occupy a committee chair against the will of the conference to which they purport to be members, to recognize and to make it so that they are no longer members of our conference. It is their choice. That's something to understand. It is their choice and, it, and, the, and the rule would respond to an abuse of their power as a rank and file member. With that, uh, I will uh, cede the podium to my good friend, well, I don't think she's out here, so that's who they were confusing me with before, um, Bob Good from Virginia. Thank you, Dan. You know, the Democrats, it's been said over and over, but it's true, they only have two issues, COVID forever and January 6th forever. They lose, and I won't go through the litany of uh, issues that they're wrong on, because it's all of them, and it would take a long time, but Ralph Norman did a great job mentioning those just a few moments ago. And so they're holding on with a death grip to COVID forever and January 6th forever. When it comes to the speaker, COVID forever, this ridiculous mask mandate, we heard from the House doctor yesterday that uh, he acknowledged that uh, you're, you are considered a high-risk area if you have 50 infections per 100,000. He said D.C. is eight, eight per 100,000. I'm not a medical guy, but I'm a pretty good math guy. That's less than one per 10,000 with a 99% survival rate from this disease. And by the way, why are we testing healthy people to find out if they might be infected? We've not done that before with anything else, but we continue to test healthy people to find out if they might be infected, whether or not they're sick. But taking the infection numbers, one out of 10,000 in DC, less than that, with a 99% survival rate, that means one in a million in DC is the morbidity rate from, from COVID. You are literally at more risk driving to work today than you are from catching and dying from COVID. And you know what? The mask will help you just as much to prevent COVID as it will prevent you from dying in an accident. So I'm glad to see most of our folks today aren't wearing a mask. But I support my colleagues and the resolution that was attempted by our, our chairman, Andrew Biggs, to remove and vacate the chair. She has violated her responsibility and privilege of leadership, and she should not lead us as the, as the Speaker of the House, and we certainly should vacate that. When it comes to January 6th, you know, we should believe people what they do and what they say. And when their words and actions tell us that they're not Republicans, we should believe them. It's a fact that uh, Kinzinger and Cheney have criticized Republicans and Republican leadership far more than they've criticized the Speaker or the Democrats. Right. Ever since we got here as freshmen six months ago, we have battled against the, uh, the, the remarks and the statements and the positions of these two so-called Republicans. Some have called them Pelosi Republicans. They might be Pelosi's Congress people, but I assure you they are not Republicans. They have abdicated and violated their responsibility as loyal Republicans. If we're going to let them to come to our conference meetings, why don't we just invite Nancy Pelosi to come to our conference meetings? So if you're going to accept committee, response, committee assignments from the other party, that means you're no longer a member of our own party. And one more comment about the chair before I turn it over to the next member, to the, to the speaker, I should say. In Leader McCarthy's remarks on the House floor yesterday, he pointed out that after this mandate came out that is not science-based, he saw the Speaker twice in the Capitol complex interacting with people at close range without a mask. Do you really think she thinks masks make a difference, that those people are, are at risk of getting COVID from her or from one another? You know what they, who they are by their actions. They continue to be the hypocrites and continue to prove that. So we need to vacate the chair. We need to require that anyone who joins a committee at their, at their assignment of the member of the other, the leadership of the other side is no longer Republican. And now I turn it over to my good friend from Illinois, Mary Miller. Thank you. So we all know freedom isn't free. And yesterday, myself and my colleagues found out when we were fined hundreds and thousands of dollars for not putting a mask on. The Democrats and Pelosi have become the party of because I said so, not allowing us to ask real questions 
or make our own informed decisions. Yesterday, we found out that America's school children are gonna be forced to be masked up again. I'm the mom of seven and grandma of 17, and I can tell you one thing I've always told my children, wash your hands and keep your hands away from your face. These masks are not healthy for them. They're touching their faces all the time. They're at no great risk of dying of this disease, and their families, their parents should be allowed to make the decision on whether they wear the masks or not. Now, coming from a farm, I know Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats think we're the deplorables that don't know how to find a copy machine, but I can tell you one thing that they must not know is that those flimsy paper masks, if you go clean a green bin out, you will end up with those flimsy blue paper masks. You will end up being sick and probably having pneumonia or something else you're gonna need medication for because they don't work. And I just wanna inform people that these are capricious decisions that they're making. They are total hypocrites. Yesterday I um, observed and I, I had conversation with Democrats that had masks off in the uh, elevators and in the hallways. As soon as the votes were over yesterday, they were on the steps here with their masks off, having close conversations, hugging each other. I took pictures of it, but they don't believe that they work. They're hip hypocrites and they're making capricious capricious decisions for all of America. And it's time for us to stand up and speak up and you know, advocate for our children. What are we doing to our children? They're just using this. They're gonna to try to shut us down again and shut our schools down. And the corresponding damage that's being done is not worth it. Thank you. Great, thank you everyone. Uh, Again, thank you. I just uh, just want to close with a couple of quick remarks. As I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, uh, no one mentioned this, but to me, this is particularly aggravating about this this speaker and her exercise of control, centralizing power to herself. If someone wants to come with to meet with any member of Congress, their member of Congress, they can be coming from my hometown of Gilbert, Arizona. They're going to inquire their name, their address, their location. They want to know what we're going to be talking about. They want to know what's going to be going on. That type of Orwellian surveillance. No wonder the Democrats are just fine with big tech uh, uh, carrying out their censor censorious uh, activities. They're OK with the surveillance state. I'm not. I don't think anybody here today is. With that, I've got, we've got time for maybe two, two questions. Big Tent Party. So isn't it wanting to kick out your colleagues from your party, complete opposite of that? Like how is um, here's the deal. A long time ago, uh, Liz Cheney decided that she was going to take on the entire Republican conference. And she was joined by Adam Kinzinger. They chose to leave the conference. Let me ask you this. Would you like it if you were planning a strategy on how to defeat people who you think are actually tearing the country from stem to stern. If you had two spies sitting right there, you knew there were spies, but you couldn't remove them. Right now, as long as they're members of the Republican conference, they're entitled to come to every meeting we have, hear every strategy. And you know what? They chose to leave. Uh, the Big Tent's still there. They just have chosen to be on the outside of that Big Tent. One more question. Back, back. What, is the, what is the benefit of making a motion to vacate the chair when that's very likely to be killed by Democrats in the majority and it could also risk Democrats stripping away more powers from the minority? Well, they, they've been trying to emasculate all of our, our, our authority and rights since they, since they took over three years ago with Nancy Pelosi. So that's the answer to the second part of your question. The first part of your question is this. If you do not stand up to tyranny in the face of potential defeat, then you will never stand up for tyranny in, in potential victory either. And here's the deal. She, they, may, they may have some people that are going to vote for, maybe, maybe, that, maybe they win. Maybe there's only one chance in 100 that we actually get to vacate that chair and she's removed. But I'd rather take that one in 100 shot. And I tell you what else. You've got people on that side that promised they would not support Nancy Pelosi to be speaker. They get to go back on the record again. Right. And let's make them go back on the record. 
That's the advantage you get. Thank you all so much. We're done. Thanks. Yes.